Carolina This Week with Tim McGinnis. Good morning and welcome to Carolina This Week. This week we're going to get back to talking about the 7th Congressional District. Lots of candidates already in line for that seat of the Republicans. There's Thad Vyers, Dick Withington, and several others that have already jumped in the race. And one of them is Mandy Wilkes, who you see right here on News Channel 15 at a different time. And we want to say right off the bat, that's a paid program you have on. You are not an employee of the newsroom or anything like that, in case people were wondering. Disclaimer accepted. Okay. Mandy, thanks for being with me this morning. Why are you running for the 7th District? Why, why do you think that that's a seat that you need to hold? You know, when I, when I ran last year for a state representative seat, I did it kind of more on a whim. Um, I, I have to be honest, I didn't think it through too much. There wasn't a whole lot, you know, I didn't have a huge, I want to run for this reason. Um, but the feedback I got and the receptivity I got, especially from women, um, just amazed me, blew me away. And I really kind of found my footing in politics, and I think that women especially women on the right don't have a lot of um, don't have a lot to look to don't have a lot to look forward to in politics right now and women on, on the right conservatives fiscal conservatives people who really care about family values and not just paying lip service to family values which is what I see a lot going on here especially in South Carolina um, I'm really kind of ready to to lift women up in that way and be something different in politics get rid of the good old boys and I'm not somebody who just wants to run because I'm a woman or say you know I'm gonna win because I'm a woman we need women just for the sake of having women no I think that right now women have a unique opportunity to um, to really change politics and, and kind of be what needs to to change to get rid of the good old boys that have completely ruined the system I want to talk about the issues in, in a little bit more detail in just a moment but I want to tackle something that I'm sure a lot of uh, viewers who would want me to ask you about and that is uh -oh. the, way, the way you present yourself on Facebook from time to time. And, and, kind of, and, and some of the things you, you, you say, what is it? Uh, how do I'm you, provocative. How do, you handle, I'm provocative. How, do you handle, how do you handle that? Why, and do you think that that might turn off some of your, uh, some, some potential voters? Oh, on the contrary. You know what? The, when I say last year I was blown away by the feedback I got from, from women out there, it was from women who said, you know what, I appreciate you coming out and representing the, the full package, somebody who's not so straight-laced, political, dry. You know, look, I say wry, not dry. Be fun, keep politics substantive, but it's okay to be sexy. I'm a woman. It's okay to, for my Facebook to have a sexy picture. Um, and I, a lot of women agree with that. And it's not, no, I don't think it's going to turn voters off. I think it's going to turn voters on. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> um, Let's talk about the issues now. I-73 is one of the big ones that people talk about around here, and whoever is going to hold this seat is probably going to have a great deal to do with either bringing it here or not bringing it here. How do you feel about I-73? What would you do for I-73 or not for I-73? I-73 is something that would be great to have here. I don't think anybody disagrees with it. The question we have is how do we fund it? Nobody has presented a way to fund it so far that's viable and that's fiscally responsible. That's my problem with it. Um, other than that, you know, hey, if we want to keep printing money, yeah, I-73 is a great idea. But the bottom line is the bottom line, and nobody is showing where we can afford I-73, even though there are benefits, there would be benefits, um, the risks way outweigh the, weigh the benefits. Um, again, the bottom line is the bottom line. We can't afford it. If you were elected to this seat, you went to Washington, would you fight against it? Uh, yeah, I would fight against it, for sure. I would fight against I-73 because I would fight for fiscal responsibility. A lot of people would say to be fiscal, fiscally responsible, you need I-73 here. Those Thinking people, about our local interests, not necessarily the national interests. Those people who say that would be pushing the government choosing the winners and losers in the marketplace. Like I said, there are undeniable benefits of I-73 for this area and nationally too. Um, but again, the bottom line is the bottom line. When you look at the bottom line of, of what it would cost to build I-73, we just can't afford it. I wish that were different. I wish we could afford it because I think it would have real, uh, real economic sustainability. It would bring economic sustainability here but we can't afford it. What 
would you fight for in Washington to bring jobs here? What, what do you think is not being done to improve our economy? And, you know, part of the 7th District is going to have among the lowest unemployment rates in the country with 20 percent in some of the PD counties. Right. Um, not quite as bad here on the coast and in the bigger city like Florence. But what about the impoverished rural areas of the new district? Um, you know, we, we have this a lot, especially in this viewing area. Marion, Florence, huge unemployment rates uh, all through the Grand Strand, but particularly Mar uh, Marion, Florence area. The biggest problem is small businesses have not been supported. Um, Boeing is a great example of this. Again, South Carolina legislators really want to pick the winners and losers in the marketplace. That's not how, that's not how the marketplace works. Um, to bring jobs, the best thing I know to do is tax reduction, not only tax reform, and tax cuts, not merely tax swaps. And what I mean by that, Tim, and this is a huge point that most legislators in Washington and abroad are missing. What I mean by tax cuts, not just tax swaps, is a corresponding budget cut for every single tax cut we have. Right now, there are tax cuts aplenty. There are tax cuts galore. But taxpayers don't get the benefit of, of that in terms of a, um, a tax rebate. And that's the biggest thing I could do, push for a tax rebate on the federal and state level to bring jobs to South Carolina. When you look at the 7th District, is there something that is not being done that needs to be done in Washington as far as helping us here? That's a great question. And, and here's, what I, here's what I say. I think entirely too much is being done in Washington in the name of helping us here at home. Um, I want the government to stop, look, and listen. We learned it back in kindergarten, right? Just stop, look, and listen. Too much the legislators in Washington are just too hell-bent on saying we have to do more, we have to do more. No, legislators in Washington need to stop and, and let us here at home, small businesses in particular, create the jobs and really get us back on the road to recovery. So get the government out of the way. Get the government out of the way. Get the government out of the way. Right. Stay with us. We will be right back with more with Mandy Wilkes running for the 7th Congressional District seat. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Carolina this week. Mandy Wilkes, who we'll see again later Sunday morning, 11 o'clock, on her show, which, again, got to put the disclaimer out there, is not a show that, uh, well, she pays for the show to be on TV. And you're running for the 7th District. We've talked about I-73. What about energy? There's been a lot of talk about trying to develop new forms of energy, drilling off the coast, wind energy. Where do you stand on energy? I think everybody should support energy independence. I mean, I don't see a reason not to support that. Um, yeah, drill, baby, drill. I mean, Sarah Palin said it a few years ago, and, and I've agreed with it ever since. Uh, we have to make sure it's environmentally responsible. Um, and that's what I mean by you know family values and the Republican Party missing out on that. Uh, I do want it to be environmentally responsible. I wouldn't support anything that is just blatantly and gratuitously environmentally irresponsible. But yeah, drill, baby, drill. Healthcare. Healthcare. Healthcare is tough. Uh, my brother's a doctor in Charleston. He's a family medicine doctor. My sister's a psychiatrist, and my sister-in-law is a psychiatrist in Charleston. Um, if there's anything that I see on a daily basis in my day-to-day -day life, it is that the healthcare system is absolutely broken. I don't know the answer, but I do know that Obamacare is the wrong solution. It is not a solution at all, and it in fact opens us up to way bigger problems. Any part of Obamacare you would want to keep in place, or you think the whole... I think the heart of Obamacare is in the right place, but again, the bottom line is the bottom line. We can't afford it. Let's talk about the wars in Afghanistan. We uh, know now that the troops are going to be coming out of Iraq by the end of the year. How do you think we need to move forward in the Middle East? Uh, my mother is an Israeli citizen. I'm an Israeli citizen. Um, I've been to Israel. I, I love Israel. I have family there. I have to say, we need to stay out. We need to keep our nose out of Israel. Israel can defend itself very, very well. Prime Minister Netanyahu said it just a couple of days ago. He said, stop trying to defend us, America. We can defend ourselves. Uh, how we move forward in the Middle East is that we get out and we stay out because, again, the bottom line is the bottom line, Tim. We cannot afford these foreign wars. Um, 
we can't afford it. We can't afford it. And, and we, we should have never gone to Iraq. And if there's one thing that um, about our foreign policy that I would like to change, we have to stop this foreign interventionist stuff all over the place. It is breaking our country. It is, we cannot afford it from the inside out. It's making us broke. As Arab nation. Springs, were they a good thing? Yeah, Arab Springs was a great thing. And that happened uh, within the Arab countries themselves and, and at the behest of Arabs themselves, rather than something America pushed for or America democratizing or trying to democratize, um, you know, the Arab countries. Uh, that's the best part, I think, about Arab Spring and, and countries like Libya really moving forward and breaking away from, from tyranny that's been there hundreds of years. Um, I wish that Obama would not have gotten involved in the Libyan, the Libyan Spring, the Libyan crisis, um, mostly because we can't afford it. I mean, it's kind of like I-73. It would be great if, if we could go and fix the world's problems and bring democracy everywhere. But look, there are, we have no jobs here at home. We have no jobs here in South Carolina. The healthcare system is broken. The system is broken. The last thing we can afford to do is invade these countries in the hopes that, you know, maybe we'll bring democracy somewhere. Because while we're trying to take democracy to these other countries, we're losing democracy. We are less free in America than we have ever, ever been before. Not a lot of time for this last question, but it's the last question I ask everybody running for office. Why should I vote for you? Go to mandywilkes.com and you will find out. That's a very simple answer. Thanks a lot, Mandy. Stay with us. We will be right back with more Carolina this week.